So, Paro, what are you thinking? And what are you dreaming of? Hello, everyone. My name is Hideaki Ogawa. I'm a director of Arsectronica Future Lab. Paro, the robot next to me right now is a communication robot born out of research at the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology in Japan and was launched to the public in 2005. Paro has a variety of embedded sensors that allow it to respond to touch, talk, and light. By designing animal-like responses into a robot, Paro presented the possibility of robot therapy. In this way, we coexist with such a variety of robots. In this episode, I will take you on a journey of robotinity. What is a robot being? Featuring various robotics research conducted in the Earth Electronica Future Lab. What is a robot? What is a human? What is humanity? And what is robotinity? Robotinity is a term and research theme coined at Future Lab in 2011, and we have been exploring the changing robotness of robots over time through artistic research. We do not treat robotics as a mere advanced tool technology, but as a culture technology. So the various robots you see behind me now are some of the robots that we exhibited at the New Earth Electronica Center's Robo Labs uh, in 2009 and at the Robotinity exhibition in 2011. At Robotinity Research, we view robots as mirrors and media that reflect human desires and hopes, as well as technology and society of their time. By utilizing various locations of our Sectronica Center, we have sought to create a platform for social experiments to examine human-robot interaction and the social and a culture aspect of robots. For example, in a joint experiment with Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro in 2009, we installed a robot that looked just like him in the Arsectronica Center's cafe. This robot, Geminoid H1, is an android in the shape of a real person, and you can control it remotely. If you think of it as a smartphone in the shape of a person, it might be easier to imagine. In this experiment, Professor Ishiguro operated the robot from Osaka to conduct a unique experiment. The Geminoid, which had previously been studied only in the laboratory, was able to go outside the laboratory and come into contact with actual social context, allowing for an open discussion with a season of Linz about the possibilities and the challenges of robots. This discussion led to a debate on humanity, robotinity, which is a mirror image of what it means to be human and what it means to be a robot. Using the advanced media technology of the Future Lab, we have transformed the Arsectronica Center into a place for demonstrating robots in a social context. And as a partner to robotic researchers, we have been working to create an innovative environment for robotic research. This perspective of creating a unique place to explore robotics and humanity has since been applied and developed in various ways. In 2010, 
we started a joint research project with Honda R&D using ASIMO. ASIMO is known as a world first serious bipedal robot. The height is 130 centimeters, and ASIMO can walk freely by controlling its center of gravity and zero moment point through predictive motor control and can climb stairs, turn, and dance. To me, it was in a way an autonomous machine in the shape of a person. Honda's goal for the humanoid robot ASIMO was to explore the coexistence of humans and robots in order to explore factors that could enhance human-robot interaction, we conducted a public participatory experiment here at Deep Space and received a wide range of opinions from the public. In this way, Future Lab has been exploring future robotness as a partner of cutting-edge robot researchers. From here on, we will be welcoming a wonderful guest to deepen our discussion on robotinity. Welcome, Martina. Hi. Martina is a professor at the Johannes Kepler University of Linz exploring robot psychology. She is a former researcher at Future Lab where she worked with me on robotinity. Martina, can you tell us about your research? Sure. I believe that in a world where we increasingly encounter robots and intelligent machines, we must put human needs and human perception of these new interaction partners at the center of technological development. In robopsychology, we therefore explore questions such as how human-like may robots become in order to still be accepted? And how can we establish appropriate levels of trust in machines? Or what does it take for us not to feel uncomfortable when mobile robots suddenly move all around us in our physical spaces? And this last question is one that we actually started working on together at GR's Electronica Future Lab a couple of years ago using drones, for example. Hida, are you up for a quick experiment? For sure. All right, let's go. So, how did that feel for you? Oh, well, I was just confused. The reason might be that the drone didn't properly communicate its intentions and it didn't indicate to you that it had seen you and would stop for you. So, it should be changed maybe. Hideaki just made the experience that it's really important that robots make themselves understandable in what they sense and what they intend to do. This is true not only for drones, of course, but also for robots on the ground in road traffic, for example. In the near future, if pedestrians want to cross the roadway of an autonomous vehicle, they must be sure that the vehicle has spotted them. So what signals could be used to support this feeling of safety? In order to explore how such new language between humans and robots might look, the Future Lab created a mixed reality experimentation space in collaboration with Mercedes-Benz. We used small robotic platforms as proxies for autonomous vehicles and um, different driving environments and light-based communication signals of the robots were simulated by projections. This was a great tinkering space to play around with different communication signals for future autonomous vehicles and try out what works best. As a result of this partnership with Mercedes-Benz, the F015 autonomous research vehicle also had its European premiere in Linz. During the Ars Electronica Festival 2015, it drove from the Ars Electronica Center to Linz Main Square, and it was not surprising that many people who passed by were very much interested in interacting with this futuristic looking machine. By the way, the F015 could project a zebra crossing onto the road to indicate that a person could cross safely. As it turned out, that's a signal that's especially intuitive to understand. 
Okay, cool. Now we are on an underwater research base. This is the virtual game environment that we are currently developing as part of Cobalt Studio, a research project in which the Ars Electronica Future Lab, the Robo Psychology Lab and five other partners from the fields of robotics, game design, artificial intelligence, safety and human-computer interaction have teamed up. Our goal is to create immersive game environments that are at the same time research labs for us, in which the player and the robot need to communicate as well as possible with each other to successfully complete the tasks in the game and to establish a trustworthy collaboration. In this particular game, the robot and the human need to collect different types of seaweeds together and also have to make a speedboat run to finally be able to collect plastic garbage from the ocean. Findings from the Cobot Studio project are intended to inform real-world practice in many areas because after all, factors for smooth teamwork between humans and robots are gaining relevance in very different fields from industrial production to healthcare to artistic collaborations with robots such as seen here at Ars Electronica. So what kind of society will emerge when robots and intelligent systems such as those introduced so far are part of our daily lives? How will people interact with these autonomous systems when they are viewed as swarms? Finally, I would like to introduce the idea of swarms art, which is an artistic vision of this autonomous society. So what we have here is a robotic medium called Swarm Display Bot, developed by Ars Electronica Future Lab. The bot is equipped with a display that can show various images on the display, and the hexagon-shaped bot can be combined to create a large image. It can also move freely using optical tracking indoors, and RDK outdoors. If we could treat the, this bot as a swarm, what artistic expression could we, could we create? This performance, Swarm Arena, was presented at the National Museum of Emerging Science and Innovation Miracan in 2019 and is a result of a joint project with the Japanese telecommunications company, NTT. Artist Akiko Nakayama and A. Wada were invited to explore the potential of robots as artistic medium. With Akiko Nakayama, we created a magical moment that works in real space by linking her drawing with swarm. With A. Wada, we embody the sound grains in real space by synchronizing the swarm with the rhythm of his unique musical instruments. What is a robot? What is a human? What is a humanity? And what is a robotinity? In this episode, we introduce various kinds of robotinity. Robotinity is a mirror-like metaphor that changes with technology, society, and the creator. What will the robotinity of the 21st century look like? And what is the future of humanity? Our journey continues.
Thank you, Hida and Martina, for this great insight. I'm Marianne Eisel and I will host the next episode of the Future Lab's 25th anniversary series called Computation and Beyond. Together with Matthew Gardner, I will take a ride through some very inspiring works, art installations and exhibits that are all circling around the transformation of knowledge into something tangible that finds a way into our hearts and minds. As you will see, this ride will not just be an empty phrase. A real cargo bike will help me to visit different places, like an abstract gesture landscape, exhibition spaces or even the inside of a shell. Stay curious and tune in to the next episode of the Future Lab's 25th anniversary series. See you!